right, this is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we'll be comparing an inexpensive juicer bought on Amazon to the Omega NC800. And actually, I'm only making this because of one of my customers. So if your name is Ann, I won't mention any last names. Thank you, Ann. Because otherwise, I would have made this video. Um, I did respond to Ann's email previously, but I want to kind of make a more in-depth version about it because I know some of you guys are wondering and maybe some of you guys are maybe even in the position to buy an inexpensive juicer or maybe buying an inexpensive juicer and don't do so until you watch this whole video there are many reasons why I make the recommendations that I do so anyways the message from Ann went John I recently purchased an NC 800 from you I really love it um, I paid $329 my girlfriend just purchased a very similar masticator the AMZ chef which has very good reviews on Amazon and is a bestseller. It costs only $120. I don't see your review of this juicer. I'm wondering why I would pay three times the amount for my Omega juicer when I could have had a similar and even perhaps more chic looking juicer for so much less. She says the pulp from her machine, her, her AMZ chef is so dry it comes out in pellets. Pulp from the Omega is moist enough. Anyways, it goes on. But you know, here's the thing with every different purchase in life. You know, hey, what's the, why should you buy a Lamborghini when you could have got a Corvette? Or why should you get, you know, one of the high-end Lexus cars when you could have got a Toyota? Or why do you get a Beamer <laughs> instead of a Beetle, right? And so, you know, the amount of money you spend in, in, in most instances, but not always, determines the quality. And just because it's a bestseller on Amazon, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good machine. There are things known as fake reviews that people and companies pay to buy and there's a whole bunch of shenanigans that go on behind the scenes on Amazon that I'm not really gonna discuss, like basically hijacking an old um, you know, listing and then converting it to a new one and then you get to keep all the old reviews even though the old reviews have nothing to do with the juicer. So I've seen all kinds of shenanigans happen and I'm not gonna comment on that but what I will comment on are inexpensive, cheap juicers, right? This machine actually was purchased at Amazon, and it's not exactly the AMZ chef, but, you know, it's representative of, uh, you know, some of the less expensive juicers out there. Now, why would you guys want to spend, you know, $329 versus, you know, $100, $120, $150? It's like less than half price. Well, in this video... I'll be showing you guys the reasons why you might want to purchase a good quality machine. I've done lots of testing between cheap juicers and expensive juicers and I've seen the difference it makes and in this episode you guys are going to learn the difference specifically. So I did reply to her and some very simple comments that I did off the top of my head was that Omega is a US based company. They have staff in America here, they have people answering the phone calls when you call them up on their 800 number, if it's not during COVID. Um, and they've had a long track record in the United States. I think Omega's been in business now for like 30 years, right? Omega's been in business for 30 years. Some of the other juicer companies, Tribest has been in business for like 30 years also. They're solid US companies with US based support. This is very important, right? And, um, the other thing, say you just get a random juicer, whether it's the AMZ Chef, whether it's this brand, a different brand, just a cheap Chinese juicer. How these companies work is that basically these companies are based over in China. So number one, you're literally exporting your money when you're buying a Chinese juicer because the company is not owned by Americans. It's owned by basically Chinese, literally in China, that probably never even set foot in America. They're able to basically buy the machines in China at the wholesale price. They ship a whole bunch over to the Amazon fulfillment warehouse. Amazon then ships out the machines as they sell them. They pay a warehousing fee and a commission every one they sell. Um, and these the people are over in China. Not to say that Chinese people. I mean, I'm half Chinese. My mom born, was born in the United States. Um, you know, are bad or anything like that. But know that they basically have no U.S. support. So. A Chinese business will basically buy juicers from China, ship it over to Amazon, have them ship it out. And when you have questions, there is no 800 number to call. There's no 800 number in the book here to call with your juicer questions. Yes, you can contact them through Amazon and they will reply back to you, but it is 100% only through email 
or Amazon that they will correspond with you so that you can get help. Furthermore, as far as I'm aware, there are far very few, if any, of these kind of companies that are reselling juicers on Amazon that have any kind of supply of parts, right? If your juicer goes defective, they probably just won't send you a part because they don't warehouse it. They'll probably just send you a whole new juicer to replace it, or they'll just forget about you and they won't, and you'll leave a bad review like some people on Amazon. So, you know, here's, that's the difference, you know, uh, the, the U.S.-based support, keeping your money in America, keep America and make it great again, or exporting your money to a Chinese company that's basically now going to spend your money in China, and Amazon takes their cut of what they do, right? The other thing is that Omega has, and some of the other major companies, major brands, has a lot more staff and experienced staff about juicing than the Asian companies, the Chinese companies that are reselling the machine. So they may, may be more better able to answer your questions. Now the other thing I'm going to say is that if you guys get a, ju do a juicer from discount juicers, right, I will be here to support your purchase to answer any questions. You know, I consider myself the number one juicing expert. You know, I've run more produce through juicers than anybody else that sells juicers online <laughs> for sure. And I've used different machines, I've juiced different things, and if I don't have an answer, I don't know who will. So, you know, so even better than purchasing from Amazon, purchase from me, support a small guy so that I can continue my mission to help educate you guys to make differences in the world, and more importantly, tell the truth, because a lot of companies, in my opinion, are not telling the truth about what's going on behind closed doors, and they just see, oh, the, this juicer's, you know, more expensive than this juicer, why should I buy this juicer when this is cheaper? Well, that's one reason, and I got a whole list more. Second reason, warranty length, right? The warranty length on the NC800 right here, 15-year warranty. What if your iPhone had a 15-year warranty on it? That's insane. You know, this machine, if it breaks during, due to manufacturer's defect, due to no fault of your own under the next 15 years, this will be covered under the Omega warranty, which once again is a 30-year-old solid U.S.-based company. Whereas if you buy an inexpensive juicer, it may have a short 90-day warranty. Maybe a one-year warranty if you're lucky. Maybe it has a two-year warranty. And anyway, that's what they say. And it may not even be printed on the box or may not even be in the instructions in there. And may not even be listed on Amazon how long the warranty is. Because a lot of the Chinese companies hope that you basically just buy it and throw it away when it breaks. And you don't contact them. Because if you do contact them, you may or may not get, may or may not get service from them. Um, and also, the machine that you bought may no longer be even produced because a lot of the Chinese companies, they're not the manufacturers, they are just the importers. So there's a factory over here that's making all the juicers. That's why you may see this juicer sold under five different brand names on Amazon. It's, it's the Home Geek, the this, the that, and I don't know, whatever kind of names are there on there. But it's basically all the all these companies are buying from the main warehouse or the main manufacturer, and then they sell it. And then if that manufacturer stops making this model, right, there's no longer parts. And they're not inventory parts, so basically you have a throwaway juicer. <laughs> so anyways, uh, on this machine, say it's two-year warranty, and this machine's 15 years. If this machine fails in three years, guess what? There's no warranty. You won't be able to buy parts in my estimation. And then you're basically just going to chuck this whole thing away, throw it away, and then buy a new one. So now you're at like, what? Uh, if it's 120, it's 240 versus 320. Hey, that 320 is looking pretty good. And now, you know, this only has a two-year warranty. So you have to buy um, seven of these times $120, whatever, $800 something dollars, $900. I don't know what the math is on that. Um, versus one $329, you know, juicer that has a warranty for 15 years to basically compensate if this machine keeps breaking on you, which I'll show you guys in a little bit why this is going to break on you in a little bit uh, so you know so for that reason buying a solid machine from a solid company is very important right next thing is where are the juicers made right this juicer is made in China this one is made in Korea I do recommend certain Omega juicers for for certain reasons I prefer the juicers that Omega makes that are made in Korea although some of their Chinese made machines are of high quality because they are literally are the manufacturer over in China and it's built to their specific specifications whereas if you're just uh, you know an importer you're just buying whatever is available on the market and that's why companies have the same exact machine under different brand names in addition the company that makes this machine 
is literally the inventor of the horizontal single auger style machine and has, made, has been the only company that I'm aware of that has made many different advancements to the technology. Right? They have an R&D department. They run thousands of carrots through their ju juicers before they're released to make sure that you guys are going to get the best juicer that's going to work the most efficient and more importantly they do durability tests right to make sure that the machine will last you a long time so that they can offer the 15 year warranty meanwhile you know i don't know what the chinese companies have um you know that are just pumping out juicers and you know i'll tell you guys if the fob price on a juicer the fob price on this machine i'm going to estimate off the top of my head is maybe like thirty dollars and you guys are paying hundred and twenty dollars and the difference is how much the company is making plus they got to ship it over plus they have amazon to warehouse it you know that's a very inexpensive piece almost a throwaway juicer in my opinion these companies do not have the r d do they, they do not have the safety certifications and all these different things plus they're paying they're not paying more than likely based on you know documentaries on netflix i've seen about you know workers in china they're not getting paid maybe a fair labor maybe working too much i don't exactly know and i'm not going to basically say anything about that because that's up to you but basically my my end result is in many but not all cases chinese companies making juices are knocking off you know ones made by other companies and just changing a little bit so they could get by the patent and in some cases you know infringe on patents which means they can potentially get shut down should the companies that own the patents want to you know take that to court or whatever the fourth reason why you should probably get a good quality name brand juicer and not even expensive because they have some expensive juicers made in china and they're no better than the cheap juicers made in china um, from a name brand company that is well established is because the quality of the parts this is very important right you know they've dialed in these parts they they check for defects you know i know when these machines are being made they have a person at the factory basically making sure that the components meet the specifications whereas i'm not sure about these machines i mean they're so inexpensive you know who knows about the quality control and if you look at some of the reviews on some of these guys yeah there's overall good reviews but there'll be some really bad reviews like the machine worked for five minutes and it no longer worked again and you know, I can tell you guys, if, if that happens to you on an Omega that you purchase from discount juicers, I will get you guys a working machine under warranty without issue. I mean, that is a no-brainer. You guys should have a working machine that's of high quality. Now, the other thing you want to be aware of is, you know, large factories like Omega, like Tribest, like Kubings, they are using materials that are, you know, the safest to use because they are literally in the health movement and they are aware of these things whereas manufacturers in china you know are they in the health movement to help people help make you know healthy living easy like try best motto no they're there to just make a quick buck right in my personal opinion of course maybe some companies are out there trying to do the right thing but i think a lot of them are just trying to make a quick buck and they cut corners in my opinion and you you will see when i open this juicer up one of the ways they actually cut corners and are actually not legitimate fifth reason this is a very important reason is the motor quality i will show you guys the difference in the motor quality between this machine and this machine by simply showing you guys the weight i mean you can see by the size of the box this is a much more substantial box than this and there's not a lot of packing in here or fluff there's solid juicing juicer in here that takes up some space that is actually a lot heavier than this guy so, I mean, just weighing out the motors, you guys will see the motor on this guy is about two times the weight of this guy. And the interesting thing is I wanted to take them apart to show you guys, and I could not get this machine apart because they use a tamper-resistant screw on one, but not all the screws. So I was like, man, I wonder why they do that. Because they knew I was going to make a video, and I couldn't show you the dinky, link, rinky motor that looks like a motor out of, like, a kid's toy, in my personal opinion, all right? And the other thing is, you know, what is the duty cycle? So it's printed on here straight up. It says uh, continuous operating time. It says less than or equal to 10 minutes. So what does that mean? That means you could juice for 10 minutes straight and then you should turn the machine off because this machine can overheat. If you overheat the motor, you may end up blowing the motor out and then it will cease to function and no longer work. So this is a very light duty juicer. And for me personally, you know, I mean, I sell the high-end juicers. I'll, I'll say that right now. I'm not going to lie about that. This is a toy, right? And if you want a toy because you're not serious about changing your health, 
Then get a toy, right? You guys get what you pay for, right? Tomatoes, for example. If you guys grow your own homegrown tomatoes or go to the farmer's market in the summertime to get tomatoes from the farmer's market, you could eat that tomato and it is so delicious, so tasty. But meanwhile, you go get tomatoes in November or December and from the store, from the supermarket, and they're pink and you eat them and there is no flavor, right? But they're both tomatoes, they're both good. No, the tomato from the local you know, farmer or your backyard that's picked ripe is a real tomato and the other one's like a tomato but it's fake, right? Same thing with juicers. These are both juice for sure, but the quality is totally different, you know, because Omega has a, a brand and a reputation to stand behind, whereas these companies, there'll be a new company selling juicers literally every week, you know, because they can, because they can make a quick buck and then they're going to go out of business, maybe, maybe they'll still be around. They're going to have different model numbers. They're going to have different juicers. And that's what it is. And here's the thing, right? The Omega NC800 has a 30-minute duty cycle that is that what is what Omega recommends. So that's three times longer this can be used straight. So say you're juicing for a big family. This thing ain't going to cut it. Juicing for 10 minutes, you could maybe make, maybe make a, a quart if you're lucky. And juicing in a half hour, you can maybe make three quarts. So that's three times longer. Well, you, you might say it's... Two, three times as much money, but the motor, you can juice three times as much. So this will save you time in the end. And to me, saving time is more important than saving money at this stage in my life. All right. Now, the other thing I will say, and, you know, of course, the duty cycle is 30 minutes. What is recommended duty cycle for Omega? I can tell you guys that I have used this machine for an hour straight without any issues yes the motor gets warm and you don't want to do that on any any you know all the time but i've done that on multiple occasions and this is a heavy duty motor and it will put up with that you know i've also seen juicers that omega would use at trade shows and they just basically run those all day juicing wheatgrass and they've also done great with very short interval breaks at the trade show so i mean these are like high quality machines versus low quality machines you know, mainly do the motor. An expensive motor has a lot more copper coils and windings in there, and copper is expensive, and you know, that's one of the reasons why this machine costs more. I mean, in the end, you guys get what you pay for. Sixth reason is because you will not be supporting landfills by d buying disposable items. This is very important as somebody that tries to lead, live a lighter footprint on the planet. Buying a cheap juicer you know, it may serve you for a year, a week, I don't know how long, maybe 15 years, highly doubtful. I'd put money that it actually is not going to last that long. Um, but here's the thing, this thing is this disposable juicer. As I mentioned before, these companies will bring in a whole bunch of inventory, they'll sell through them all, and then they'll go to the factory, hey, I want to buy that same machine. The factory is no longer producing that old model because now they got the latest and greatest new snazzy model that costs more money. So you, you know, you'll, and they don't even bring in the parts either. So basically now you have a disposable juicer. If the juicer breaks, you're just basically going to have to throw it away and it's going to add more plastic and different kinds of electronics to the landfill, which I would hope that you guys don't want as much as I don't want that for our beautiful country. Seventh reason to buy a name brand juicer. Uh, from a U.S. based company is because you will get better support, right? Not only is the company there uh, to back you, like you could call Omega on their 800 number, you could also email them, whereas a company like this, you have to contact them through Amazon and maybe if you're lucky, you'll find their email address, but you will never find a phone number because they are located in China and they may not even speak English. <laughs> Um, so you will get better support by a U.S. based staff. Furthermore, if you guys buy from Discount Juicers, you have me on your side to support you not only before the sale, like I'm making videos today, but also after the sale should you have specific questions about why is my auger turning green, John? Well, you know, the augers on the NC800 and the VSJ843 as well as other Ultim augers will turn, uh, kind of have a green, like turquoise tinge to them if you juice carrots. And those are the pigments in the carrots that are kind of staining the black. And so like the, the I guess if you add black with orange, it kind of looks like greenish something color. And just scrub that off with soap and water. Actually, a guy asked me that just the other day. You know, and you have me to answer your questions and generally have a faster reaction time than some of the big companies out there. 
Um, you know, so yeah, support is paramount, and especially dealing with a company in China that, you know, I, I don't really know what's going to happen. All right, so that was what actually I emailed her, but now I want to get into more in depth because I want to get into opening this machine and comparing it with the NC800. I guess, you know, just going for the NC800, first thing I want to show is that this machine, besides just a juicing, which this machine only does juicing, this machine is a nutrition center. That means it does more than just juicing. It is a full-on kind of quote unquote food processor. You could process many different foods. You could make nut butters. You could make, you could extrude pasta. You could grind up your coffee. You could grind up and mince herbs. You could make a sorbet, right? You can make a soy milk, a green juice, vegetable juice, fruit juice, right? You can mince your herbs like I've mentioned. So this does a lot more than just the simply juice aspect. And just, you know, alone, if you guys just freeze ripe bananas you get for really inexpensive at the grocery store when they're ripe, Put them through the machine, it'll make a nice sorbet, and so then you don't have to buy expensive ice cream that also is not as healthy as eating frozen banana sorbet, in my personal opinion, right? The thing I will say is that this machine has a commercial, uh, powerful commercial quality motor and heavy duty GM, GE Altum Auger, and I mean, I trust Omega to basically abide by what they're putting on their box because, you know, they are in business, they do know the U.S. based laws that they must abide by and, you know, basically, um, you know, have, tell the truth. I mean, basically, I mean, that's just what it comes down to. And uh, so, yeah, so let's go ahead and move this Omega box out the way. And let's go ahead and talk more about this guy right here, which I got on Amazon. This is the uh, Moore Pilot Multifunction Juice and Vegetable Juicer Model AMR 520. Good choice for greens. <laughs> okay. So if you look at the listing for this more pilot in the title, it will say BPA free, um, you know, and you'll see why I'm mentioning that <laughs> when we go through some of the parts. And if we turn over the box, it says high juice extracting rate. I mean, you'll also see in many different ads on Amazon for Chinese juicers, some of the English is not exactly correct. And then it kind of makes you wonder, man, if the English is not totally correct, what else is not correct about this machine? Low noise, give you a better user experience. Keep the nutrition of the fruits and vegetables. Enrich your diet, make a healthy living. <laughs> I mean, that's totally mangled. I'm not an English teacher, but I know that's not good. Specifications, rated voltage 120, rated power 150 watts. Actually, the Omega NC100 is also rated at 150 watts, right? Oh, they're both 150 watts. That means they're the same. They are not the same. You could have a 150 watt motor. That's just how much power it pulls doesn't mean one is better than the other because of the same wattage, right? Rated frequency 60 hertz and it says continuous operation operating time less than or equal to 10 minutes interval time uh, less than or equal to or, or it says uh, greater than 10 minutes so that means you gotta maybe let it rest afterwards and then I want to show you guys this at the bottom of the box I mean you guys can see those little they got all these little insignias down here one is uh, ETL one is FDA, one is ROHS, one is like a recycle symbol, and one is like do not throw away, and it says made in China. All right, so the symbol that I wanted is in question is right in the box is the FDA symbol, right? FDA symbol, what does that stand for? That stands for Food and Drug Administration, which is in the U.S., and if you think, oh, it's FDA, it must be approved by the FDA, is what a person like me or maybe like you would think, so that means this must be a good juicer, right? Well, you might actually want to think again because if you're located in China and you're, you know, company selling juices on Amazon, the FDA is probably not going to grab it because they got bigger fish to fry. But basically, I printed this out from the FDA. Um, I think it's like FDA.gov um, actually is the website. And it says FDA logo policy, which is clearly on the juicing box right here. And it says that uh, general information, the FDA logo is for the official use of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and not for use on private sector materials. To the public, such use would send a message that FDA favors or endorses a private sector or organization or the organization's activities, products, service, or and or personnel either overtly or tactically which FDA does not and cannot do. Unauthorized use of the FDA logo may violate federal law and subject those responsible to civil and or criminal liability. Alright, 
So this is the FDA policies, but yet this FDA symbol is on this juicer box as well as many different, you know, um, images on Amazon. When you go look at juicers, they'll be the FDA, so you think it's safe. Number one, they should not be using it. Number two, it could be considered illegal. Number three, that is deceptive advertising, in my opinion, and I'm not a lawyer either. I just, I, I sell juices and I juice a lot. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and open this machine up and uh, go over it. So, number one, here's the juicer body right here. We're pulling this out. This is very light, and you'll see why this makes it different. I can lift it up with like literally one finger. I mean, you might, some, some people think, oh, this might look pretty snazzy or it looks pretty nice because it's like not long, but you know, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the orange. And then we have the main juicing parts that has this little button. You press this button and it uh, will it'll somehow uh, go in here if I, could, if I could even line it up. Uh, you got to put it in this direction and then it locks in place like that. And then you have like a little toothbrush cleaning brush that is used. The bristles are a lot not not as stiff as I would like. And so that's the uh, that's the juicer. To me, this is a toy. It's really light. Now, the most important part of this is I want to go ahead and take the parts apart and look at them. So number one, this pusher is hollow. Oh, and there is a plastic recycling symbol on here. Oh, and this one, the plastic is PP polypropylene. So that's actually a decent plastic to use. Here's the funnel part, this also PP polypropylene. We're going to take off this part right here, the end cap. It does not say what this end cap is. It is a non-adjustable end cap, um, so I don't know the plastic. In addition, the juicing screen, it does not say the plastic. I know the plastic on like the Omega juicers on the juicing screen is Altum, which is eight times stronger. And they used to use a standard plastic back in the olden days, but they found it broke really quickly. So they use a virgin Altum plastic, which is stronger than a recycled Altum plastic. And it's one of the strongest plastics available. Um, and meanwhile, if they don't have a strong or reinforced plastic, this may be more prone to breakage. And as I said, you may not even be able to get parts should it should break. And then basically, what does that mean? You gotta throw your juicer away. Then we have an auger. The auger is black, like other, other augers. There is no code on here to let me know what the material is. Is it Altum? Is it something else? I have no idea. Um, I did see a review where they were actually putting alcohol to make some kind of herbal tinctures through the juicer and it literally melted the auger, which I think is really not good on an inexpensive Chinese machine. Um, I don't encourage you to put alcohol through any juicer. It's, that's not really designed to do that, although it shouldn't make the, the, it shouldn't basically make the plastic like melt, which I thought was odd. Then finally we have this piece. So this piece is very interesting, right? In the ad of this machine, it says BPA free, but then yet, if we look at this piece, they did give me a code to read. And there is a recycling code on here, and it says PC. So PC, what does that mean? That means polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is known to have the BPA in it, despite this says it in the, on the, you know, the title of the Amazon listing. It says BPA free. But yet this has PC polycarbonate. And I know these things, but most people would have no clue. They wouldn't see these little symbols. They wouldn't know what they are. And they don't sell juicers. So to me, this, this means that this contains a BPA in there. And it's something, you know, that many people try to avoid. Plus, that means they're also lying. They're lying about the BPA. This is polycarbonate. Po polycarbonate has BPA. That's why the Nal Nalgene bottles back in the day, the camping bottles, like, were banned. You cannot use polycarbonate as, you know, baby bottles because it has, you know, the BPA in there either. That was banned in the U.S. But yet the FDA says it's all right because it's on the box. Well, that's illegal too. <laughs> all right, so let's assemble this machine. Let's see. We put it in here, then it locks in place. We can put the auger in there. Lock in the screen. I mean, this is easy to assemble. I will give you that. And then I put this end cap on. Put the funnel on. And then put down the pusher, all right? <laughs> so that's more about the more Pilot. Let's go ahead and get out the NC800 and compare it. All right, so now I'm gonna compare these two guys side by side, all the different parts, and show you guys my opinions on them. All right, so the first thing is, if you notice, this one's a lot more substantial, but John, this one takes up more counter space than this guy. Well, that's because the, they wouldn't make this this large if it didn't need to, trust me. 
the motor is really this large in it. It is a solid heavy duty motor. I would have took this apart to show you guys the motor in this one and this one, but I was not able to get this guy apart because it had some kind of tamper resistant screw. I was not able to get off and I don't want to destroy the juicer just to show you guys the motor, but I have another way I'll do that. I'll be weighing the motors only in just a hot second. So that pusher on the NC800 is a sealed pusher, which is nice, so that's easier to clean. Um, it's also a, you know, a nice uh, you know, food safe material. Uh, two pushers, let's see. This pusher won't fit in there, and this pusher will fit in here. And there is a play in here, so that means the opening on the NC800 is larger than the Moore Pilot um, you know, because they've maximized the size of this feature, which will make juicing easier for you. Let's go ahead. Well, we can remove the funnel on this guy. We can't remove the funnel on this guy because it's one piece. But you guys can see the shape of the funnel. This funnel will hold a lot more than this funnel will. So if you're juicing something like cherry tomatoes, it'll make it a lot easier uh, to juice those cherry tomatoes because you basically just uh, roll them in the funnel and they'll roll down into the juicer. All right. Taking the next pieces off, we got the drum cap, which is right here. And with the drum cap on the Omega, you have this little dial and it goes from zero to five. Uh, you put it in on zero and you can crank it up to five. What this does, this keeps extra back pressure on the pulp to keep the pulp inside the machine to get it drier before it expels it. It always should be set to five if you're juicing something like vegetables, hard vegetables, root vegetables, leafy greens, or wheatgrass. And you should put it to one if you're juicing fruits, so this will allow an easier um, a time for the fruits to come out, the pulp to come out instead of get stuck in the machine. And in some cases, you may just want to remove it altogether if things are just getting backed up too much. Luckily, in the NC800, I can explain to you guys that things get backed up a lot less in this machine than other horizontal auger juicers because they've done a lot of R&D to make sure it works the best compared to other ones that may just be knocking off stuff. Meanwhile, over on this guy, um, and the thing I like about the NC800 is that, you know, this is, I don't see any kind of plastic seams or glue spots for food particles to get stuck into, and that's something I can't necessarily say about this guy right here. Um, you know, it may be like a few pieces glued together. But anyways, on this piece right here, there is no adjustment. The pulp basically just free flows out. It's almost kind of like not having one of these guys on here. So you don't get the benefit of up to 10% more juice by having this attachment. The pulp will always flow out. So that means they have to make it so that the fruit pulp will flow out and the vegetable pulp may, not, may come out prematurely and still be a little bit wet. Next, let's go ahead and pull out the screen. Another big difference here. This is a two-stage screen, and if we pull out this screen, it is a one-stage screen right here. This is the style screen Omega had, I don't even know, like over like 20 years ago when they came out the original 8001 machine. They came out the 8001, 8002, 8003, 8004, 8005, 8006, 8007. NC 800 is now the latest, oh, and then the NC 1000 came out, which I don't recommend. But, uh, you know... Uh, the original one had a single stage screen, but nowadays Omega has a two stage screen because they know with the two stage screen on the initial crush of the produce juice will drip out this first stage, which this one simply does not have. Then as a pulp works down the, the cone and gets ground up more, um, the juice can come out the second stage right here, which actually has lots of fine small holes, whereas this guy, you know, has a lot more holes. So it'll be, uh, you know, in my testing, generally this style screen makes more yield, but this one might yield more because it has more holes. That also means this is going to give you a harder time or take you guys more time to clean. Also, this is properly reinforced Altum, uh, you know, and this, this, this is a lot more thicker and heavy duty. And this one just basically has these really thin kind of like reinforcement points and maybe prone to breaking. Um, yeah, so... Uh, and then also the other thing to remember is that on here you guys have like this silicone flap which kind of once again keeps some resistance on the produce to ensure you're going to get a higher yield than the free flow design without that little um, silicone flap on this guy. And once again the quality of the parts, I don't know the material that this one is made out of. Okay. Next coming out we got the augers. So this auger looks more like a traditional style auger, uh, first generation. That was on like the original 8001, and here's a new auger. So number one, the auger on the NC800 is larger. 
Um, you know, so that means there's more time to get the produce ground up and crushed down and then juiced. Um, you can clearly see on this auger here, this is like the crushing stage. This is kind of like the grinding stage. And this is the pressing stage when the juice is pressed out. Whereas this one, basically, you kind of have a crush. And then you kind of have like a grind and squeeze at the same time. I could definitely see, you know, there's a different sheen on both these augers. Now, this is my well-used uh, NC800. And this is a newer auger here. But to me, the plastic, I believe, may be different um, personally. But I don't really know for sure. And you know, all about the quality of the plastic and the and the pieces that they are using. And you know, I, 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 they don't disclose the plastic they're using. They may they might not even know if you ask them, and you don't even know if you can trust what they're telling you. In my personal opinion, all right. Next, we got the main juicing body here coming right out. And once again, this is the polycarbonate material, and on the Omega. NC800, this is made out of the Eastman Triton material, as far as I'm aware. These parts look fairly similar, although definitely a different, uh, you know, sheen on the parts as well. Um, yeah, I can't really say much else. The NC800 feet shoots a little larger. And now we get down to the main motor body. So this is the part that I want to show you guys. So if we turn this guy on, it comes on. It kind of has like a high pitch whine. To me, that high pitch whine means it's going through some kind of gear reduction, kind of making it a little bit louder. Looks like it's kind of running a little bit quick there too. And if we turn this guy on the NC800, it seems like it's a lot more like solid, like instead of like high pitch. You know, to me, this is more calming. That's a bit more kind of like chaotic, but that's my personal opinion. You may like the, 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 you know, the, um, one that's a little bit higher pitch, personally. Next, what we're going to do is we, I got my uh, shipping scale right here. And so we're going to basically uh, take this guy, put it front and center, make sure we're teared out right here. And you guys could clearly see we're at, uh, what is it? Hopefully you guys can see that. Zero pounds. We're going to go ahead and put this on the scale. And you guys can see we're reading... 5.9 pounds. Hope you guys can see that in the lighting, but it's 5.9 pounds. You gotta take my word for it. I mean, once again, you know, I can lift this guy up with one finger. Put that to the side. Next, the Omega NC800. I can put this on one finger and it's hurting. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and put that on the scale. Make sure we're totally resting on the scale. And we're gonna weigh this out. And look at that 10.9 pounds, right? So that's you know not quite double the weight, but this is a lot heavier duty motor despite being 150 you know watts and 150 watts, right? You can't compare wattage. That does not mean how good the motor is. It doesn't talk about anything about the torque or the horsepower of the motor. They don't disclose that because likely that's a really you know it's it's not that powerful of a motor. Plus people saying that it you know burns out. It worked good for two months and then it burned out. I can almost I can almost guarantee you guys, right, that a motor on one of these guys, unless you really do something wrong to it, it's just going to be stable for you. These are durable motors that they've done a lots of testing with. I mean, the juicing parts will break, and if you look at it, many juicer companies offer a long motor warranty on motors that are good quality, but they may not offer as long of a warranty on the parts. Omega has a 15-year warranty on the parts of the machine, as well as the motor. And that is your guarantee that it's going to last a nice long time. So anyways, let's go ahead and assemble these guys. They're both easy to assemble. This guy's a bit easier. Just put this to open, slide this in. We're going to go ahead and take the auger. The auger slides all the way back. Don't be alarmed when the auger, there's a little bit of gap between the shaft and the back of the auger housing. Um, you know, that's totally normal. We're going to take the screen, put that in. Super simple, super easy. And the uh, drum cap with the outlet adjusting knob cranked down to five and it's all set up. On the more pilot, once again, we gotta put this guy in, kind of, and then shift it to one side. We're gonna go ahead and put the auger in here. We're gonna go ahead and put the screen in there. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the, the drum cap on there. It is all set up, and now we got these two machines assembled, and now we're gonna go ahead and juice the exact same amount of produce in both machines to show you guys what we get. All right, so as you guys can see, I'm all set up, ready to juice, but first I want to do a weigh-in. Today we'll be juicing organic carrots, celery, and apples. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do a weigh-in for you guys to show you guys we have a fair fight. Over on the Moore Pilot, looks like we have a 1653 
Over on the Omega NT800, also looks like we have 1653. We're going to go ahead and pan back 1653 on both scales. Even fight. All right, so let's go ahead and move these scales out the way and let's get juicing. So I think I will juice first in the Omega NC800 juicer. And I know since many of you guys do straight celery juice, we'll be juicing basically the straight celery and then we'll make a carrot apple juice at the end and I'm not going to clean the juicers uh, basically in between alright so uh, let's go ahead and get juicing uh, juicing celery is really easy on this machine no pre-cutting is necessary We're just going to go ahead and put one in make sure the adjustment is set to 5 make sure our collection cup is down below and our pulp cup is down below as well and uh, basically the way to juice celery just put one stock in at a time and you will have to push each, each uh, you know, celery stock in and give the machine to work. I don't even really like to use the pusher. I like to use the next piece of celery to push the previous uh, celery to the machine. As you guys can see, the pulp is coming out fairly dry. I think in order to save you guys time, since this is pretty uneventful, we're going to go ahead and speed this up. Alright, down the last little bit of celery, we're just going to go ahead and juice the uh, center heart first. Then we have one last stock. We're almost overflowing. I think I've calculated this almost exactly right. Hopefully we don't overflow. This has basically gone uneventful in the Omega NC800. Once again, right after you put that last piece of produce in, you're going to want to let the machine run a little bit more because there is going to be unjuiced produce in the machine. And how to know when to stop is you're going to look at the pulp as it's coming out. Uh, if the pulp basically stops running and the juice stops dripping out, then basically you're done and it looks to be that way. We're going to go ahead and turn that off and then I like to tip the machine up this direction and this direction. You'll always get a little bit more juice out, alright? So that worked pretty uneventfully. I guess the next thing is we're going to go ahead and juice in this guy right here and see how the process goes, alright? So we got our celery and let's get started. It uh, beeps and then it turns on and then we put the celery in this look at the housing on this now the housing may move even on these guys but this housing is really rocking back and forth and uh, you know this just looks a little bit shoddy to me <laughs> but yeah keep in mind all, all, all housings on the juicers may um, you know have some kind of rotation on there uh, this just seems to be a bit more more than I would normally see on Omega NC 800 all right so uh, in order, once again, to save time, we're going to go ahead and speed this part of the video up for you guys. Alright, we're just about done juicing in this inexpensive juicer here. Last bit of celery going right through the machine. This has basically worked uneventful and it looks like it has a similar but maybe a little bit less yield, but it's pretty doggone close. And uh, go ahead and use the pusher. Yeah, this thing is like moving a lot. There's a lot to play in here. I mean, yeah, there's definitely play in this guy, but look at this. A lot more solid. I see some movement, but this is like really, really a lot more play there. Don't be alarmed, though. If you get an NC800, there is play. Every model is a bit different, but this, this is a lot more. All right, so this pretty much stopped. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the pulp. So this pulp has kind of just come out in like kind of big pieces, and it's just stringy, fibrous stuff. And when we squeeze this, I mean, you can definitely squeeze some juice out of it. Uh, you can rejuice the pulp in these style machines easily. And over on this side, if we squeeze the pulp out, 
I mean, looks pretty similar, maybe a tad bit more uh, pulp. Now, the interesting thing is, I think we'll, we're going to go ahead and weigh the pulp out today. Three seventy nine is what was ejected. There's still maybe pulp inside the machine, which is not accounted for. And on this guy, the pulp weight is three hundred and eight. So the pulp is a little bit lighter, which is kind of what I felt when I was um, squeezing out the juice. You know, the pulp is a bit drier on the NC um, eight hundred by a tad, not by a lot. Next, let's go ahead and see how much juice we got here. And we will be using a sieve to sieve out the juice uh, to make sure we have a fair uh, comparison for you guys. And let's see, this, this guy's extremely full, so we're gonna have to go really slowly and carefully and make sure we don't spill it here. And we're just gonna go ahead and slowly pour that out, hopefully without spilling. Because uh, another thing is, you know what I mean, though? NC800, oh, I'm spilling, has been, uh, you know, really designed well and appropriately, and they've, like, worked out a lot of the kinks and bugs over the years it's been out. It's been out for 13 years, whereas, you know, one of an inexpensive juicer you may buy may just be a new model that all the bugs may not worked out, be worked out with, and you may be getting a lemon. Uh, there is a fair bit of pulp, um, for sure, created by the NC800 going through my fine sieve. Definitely. All right, next let's go ahead and take the juice from this juicer here and pour this out. All right, also created a lots of, actually a lot more pulp uh, than the Omega NC100. I mean, this is like totally pulp. <laughs> like a lot more pulp. It's insane how much pulp is created. All right, so next let's go ahead and shake these down. All right, you're getting shaken down. Give me all your juice. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys a close up and check the yield. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys close ups on the yields over on the More Pilot, the inexpensive juicer. Uh, looks like we got right at 550 milliliters of juice. Over on the Omega NC800, it looks like we have like uh, 610 milliliters of juice. So that made about 60 more milliliters of juice. So that's like, a, you know, at least a good uh, approximately 10% more or something like that. So the Omega did make more, so this will save you money in the long run. In addition, let's take a look at the pulp. Maybe you like pulp in your juice, maybe you don't. The pulp created on the NC800 was that much, and if we just go over to the More Pilot, the inexpensive juicer, look at that. That's like at least three times as much just looking at it, and we're just going to go ahead and pan up here. Look at the difference in the pulp there. Three times more pulp in this machine. I mean, it, yes, it definitely worked, but it was at a cost. It, it inflated the yield by a lot because it put a lot more pulp in the juice, and to me, pulp is not juice, although it may be beneficial to eat. All right, so actually I want to go ahead and weigh the pulp for you guys to kind of see how much each juicer made in pulp because it is significant. I'm, gonna, I'm guessing it's three, three times approximately as much. So the Omega NC800 pulp, um, 18 grams <laughs> on the pulp on the NC800. And then over on the More Pilot, the inexpensive juicer. Wow, 55 grams. So that's approximately three times. So my, my eyeball in it was pretty accurate. I do do this a little bit comparing to lots of juicers, right? So wow, three times more pulp in the juice that would reduce the yield. And uh, so yeah, so in general, basically I could say due to, from this test, this is why you would pay more for an NC800. Not only are you getting a better quality juicer with a seven, and a half times longer warranty. <laughs> Not only do you have a more powerful motor that could run, you know, straight for 30 minutes and probably even up to an hour without any issues, whereas this can only run for 10 minutes. Not only won't you have some kind of rinky-dink plastic parts that are not, you know, maybe safe because it contains polycarbonate, you're going to get 10% more juice and less pulp in your juice to boot. 
Um, so actually I want to go ahead and take these apart real quick to show you guys what's going to happen and what you're going to have to clean. So the hardest part to clean is the juicing screen. So this is where an inexpensive juicer will cost you time. To me, time is more valuable than money for you. Maybe money is more valuable than time. Um, but yeah, time to spend with the family, time to do other things are way more important than time cleaning juicers to me. And here's the difference. The difference is how much screen area are you guys going to have to clean, right? Uh, there's lots of screen area on this juicer here. Every cone has screen area and you can see the celery is really plugging up the holes. Whereas on the Omega NC800, you know, the screen area is a lot less by a factor of at least like three. And the first stage screen is actually hardly impacted with pulp at all. So this will be significantly easier to clean. Um, so this is going to save you time in cleaning. I know for a fact that the NC800 takes me about 80 seconds to clean, which is the fastest juicer I've seen. This one, we're probably going to have to add a minute because some of the some of this pulp will literally get jammed and crushed into the um, juicing screen, and you'll have to scrub it fairly well with even maybe a, a better brush than they give you because it doesn't have a good stiff bristles on the brush they give you there. So yeah, time is money. This one will take longer to clean as well. I'm going to get this juice put up, and then we're going to come back at you and juice the apples and carrots, and I'm going to go ahead and clean the screens real quick. All right, we're back, and now we're going to go ahead and juice the apples and the carrots in both machines. And first, we'll start with the more pilot. And always, you want to rotate the different ingredients, so put a piece of apple and then a piece of carrot, a piece of apple and a piece of carrot. And sometimes I like to even use the carrot to push in the apple. So I think to uh, save time for you guys, we're going to go ahead and do this off camera or on camera, but we're just going to speed it up for you. So it looks like I'll be done in a jiffy. All right, we're down to the last carrot on the more pilot. And basically the thing is this, like, I noticed like because this is so small when I'm pushing this in, it almost wants to tip the whole machine forward because the motor is so small where I was, and light and the motor on the NC inverter is a lot more beefy and you have a lot more leverage to push against and it's not going to really make everything rotate. Wow, and I just heard some kind of crack on there. So definitely this motor struggled a little bit with the carrots, although it did not stop at any point and it appears to do a, you know, a decent job. Although I see the screen really impacted with pulp and when I did clean the celery off the screen I literally had to take a knife and scrape it off whereas on the NC800 I literally just had to use a brush. There's something about how they designed the screen on the NC800 so that the screen is a lot easier to clean. It doesn't get impacted pulp in the little holes which happens on other machines which is you know one of the reasons why you might want to go with a good quality machine because they got more things hopefully dialed in and definitely more importantly if I'm recommending it to you guys, because I know I've tested all these guys and I'm just like saying stuff. I mean, the NC800 is my favorite horizontal auger juicer at this time. All right, so next let's go ahead and juice in the NC800. And uh, let's go ahead and just uh, push each item in and we're gonna go ahead and rotate the different items, maybe like two pieces of apple and then like a little bit of carrot and just rotate. And we're just gonna come back at you when we're about done. All right, and we're down to the last carrot on the NC800. This thing has just not really stopped. It hasn't, the, like the motor pitch hasn't changed. It's just powering through everything I throw at it. Once again, you know, you, you buy a good solid name brand juicer, it's gonna work. A lot less headaches, you're gonna have less problems with it in general, all right? Not to say you'll never have a problem with this guy because they can have problems, but it's quite rare that I see any problems with, you know, these high-end machines. Wow, and so once again, you're gonna let this run just a bit more until it stops. And the other thing is, you know, you can look at the pulp. The pulp is different. These are in like little pellets or logs, and these are in like just a whole bunch of stuff. And that's basically just the way the juicers is designed, right? It is drier because it's in pellets. Not necessarily, you guys saw how I just weighed out the celery pulp, and the celery pulp weighed more in this machine than the NC800 that was more effective. So, you know, that doesn't mean much. And of course, once each person squeezes it, for one person, they might be dry. For one person, it might be wet. 
And so that's a subjective versus objective when you're doing a side-by-side -side comparison such as I'm doing today. Let's go ahead and turn that machine off, get this table cleaned up a little bit, and let's go ahead and, once again, we're going to go ahead and sieve out uh, the juice to make sure we have a fair fight. Um, I'm going to estimate that the NC800, which is evidently the same thing as the NC900, just the color is different, um, is going to yield more juice as it did last time, and also there will be more pulp in the less expensive machine. All right, so let's once again tip this guy up a little bit, get a couple drips, tip it up this way, get a couple drips. Then I like to move the collection cup right underneath so we have no more drips. And we're going to pour this through the sieve here. Now here, pay attention that in general, uh, fruits, while they can be juiced in these style machines, they're not optimal to juice. Uh, a vertical juicer would be a better juicer to juice fruits in, um, especially with apples if they're not harvested. They're harvested in, in, in the fall when apples are in season, and then they're in cold storage. So if you're buying apples like in June, uh, they're more than likely from cold storage from last year. When apples are in cold storage for excessive periods of time, they get soft and mealy, and they produce more pulp in your juice they may even turn into applesauce. So I always recommend you guys juice some kind of root vegetables with some kind of fruits like the apples. It'll work a lot better. So even the NC800 made a fair bit of pulp that we're going to have to shake down. And tip this way up. I don't know. Wow, this thing is so light. It's insane. Um, and let's go ahead and pour this guy out here. Wow. I mean, I'm about to say this is like a smoothie consistency like straight up. So this will be very interesting after we get these sieves shaken down to see which juicer put more pulp in the juice. Uh, generally carrots will make a lot more pulp than the celery, but the apples will make even more pulp in the juice than the carrots. Alright, so we're going to shake this down a little bit and we're going to come back at you when we got the juice shaken down. All right, we got it all shaken down finally, and now let's go ahead and give you guys a close-up on the yields as well as the pulp. Let's go ahead and give you guys a close-up on the yields over on the more pile, the inexpensive Chinese juicer. Looks like we have right at around 300, a little bit under 375 milliliters. Scooching on over to the NC800, looks like we're basically at around 400 milliliters, all right? So yeah, there's the side shot you guys can see. So maybe 25 milliliters more. So definitely still a difference. But once again, let's go ahead and look at the pulp. If we would not compare it with the pulp, the more pilot may even be more, may yield more because it's inflated because of all the pulp inside. And actually that is a fair bit of pulp patty inside there. Over on the Omega, once again, not surprising, you know, definitely put less pulp in the machine. And that's what you're gonna get when you get a juicer that's well made, that's designed properly. And once again, I mean, what is it, three times the pulp once again? I'll go ahead and weigh it out just for giggles here. But yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, the main differences. And let's go ahead and give you guys a summary. All right, let's go ahead and weigh out the pulp that was uh, generated on each machine here. I think it's about three times more, maybe two times more minimum. Uh, tear out our scale. All right, and let's go first. We're going to go ahead and weigh the pulp on the NC800. Okay, we got 17 grams of pulp on the NC800 right here. Let's scooch that off. Make sure we're zeroed out once again. And pulp on the More Pilot, 42. So that's, uh, you know, maybe two and a half, three times approximately, um, you know, difference in the pulp, as I, as I had probably estimated there. All right, and so next I'm going to go ahead and try the juices. I didn't do that on the celery because they probably would have tasted fairly similar. But I want to taste these, so NC800 juice coming right up. Mmm, that's a nice recipe. It's like more apples and carrots. Once again, more pilot. The juice, taste this one. I mean pretty much non-discernible, like they taste pretty much the same, I can't say that one tastes better. Basically these are both slow uh, horizontal auger machines, this one might run maybe 10 RPM faster, but that's not going to make a significant quality difference of the juice being produced, alright? 
Mm. That's good. I can't wait till I'm done and then I get to drink my juice here. So now I'm going to go ahead and share my final thoughts on comparing an inexpensive Chinese juicer to a major name brand juicer made in Korea, such as in this case, Omega, and the differences. So you guys saw the yields. Yeah, I mean, Omega made more. Um, you know, depending on what we're juicing, you're going to get maybe a 10, maybe up to 20% more yield. It's going to put less pulp in the juice, so that means you don't have to strain it as much. If you don't want the pulp, um, it means less hassle. This machine was kind of like moving all over the place, a little bit less quality control. This one also will be harder to clean. Actually, I want to show you guys the screens on the carrots because the carrots are known uh, for basically getting impacted in the screen. So, I mean, that's a lot of impacted carrot pulp on the screen right there that you will have to be cleaning. And over on the Omega NC800, there's a lot less screen area that you guys are going to have to clean. This will save you a bunch of time. Once again, we got that cool auger color. If you look, it's kind of like that uh, greenish color on the auger, if you can see that closely. All right. So, yeah, in terms of the juice quality, it's probably fairly similar. Um, because both these machines operate the same way. They grind and press and they both work pretty well, I could say, probably because the NC800 makes more yield in the juice, it actually gets overall more nutrition into the cup because you're not wasting it in the pulp. Uh, next thing I want to discuss is, you know, in the cup, if they're using polycarbonate, right, in, in some of the plastic parts, you know, that, that may uh, bring things into the juice that was not there in the first place, right? And so I'm not really going to discuss that because I know for some of you guys that's important, for some of you guys it isn't. But I would definitely tend to trust a major brand manufacturer producing the machine in Korea than an Amazon seller that I have no familiarity with. They may only started their company a year or two and I have no clue. In addition, let's talk about the motor. You guys saw that the motor on this is twice the weight. That means it's a more heavy duty motor with you know, heavy duty more copper in there. It could run 30 minutes versus 10 minutes. You know, I've run this machine for up to an hour without issue. I don't necessarily recommend doing that, but if you have to, you can. This has a full 15 year warranty. This has a two year warranty. I mean, here's the thing. I don't have to tell you guys. You guys get what you pay for, right? You might not get customer service on this guy. You might not have a warranty if the company just disappears because you can only get through them on Amazon. They have no, ask them for their street address in the, in the US. They have none. They don't have a, They might give you a warehouse address, but then Google the address they give you for the warehouse because a company did this to me. They say, we have three locations in the U.S. with staff. And I said, give me the addresses. I Googled the addresses. Sure enough, they're fulfillment warehouses. I'm like, these are fulfillment warehouses. Do you really have staff in the U.S.? And I caught them in a lie. So they're like, they'll, they'll lie to you to sell juicers in my personal opinion and based on my personal experience. So, you know, for these reasons, in summary, I will say this. If you're serious about your health, serious about going on a juice fast, you saw fat, sick, and nearly dead, and you want to do this for life because you know juicing can be a healthy part of a balanced diet, it can make significant changes in your life because getting more of these fruits and vegetables are the most un under eaten and health most healthful foods on the planet is a good thing, and you're committed and you're solid. Spend more money now and get the good machine now so you don't have to keep buying garbage juicers later. And that's a summary. Right? If you're not sure that you're going to keep this up and you're going to do it forever, you might want to get an inexpensive juicer. That's a throwaway juicer, but then you're creating more landfill waste. So actually what I'd recommend probably instead of buying an inexpensive throwaway juicer that may not be of the greatest components, that may say things on the box that maybe they're not supposed to, that may not be true to what they say in the ad, may have misspellings in the ad, I would actually encourage you guys to actually go on a site like OfferUp or Craigslist. Actually, just two days ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, and she can't afford a brand new Omega juicer, so I found on OfferUp an Omega 8004 um, for 60 bucks used, which is less expensive than one of these, you know, Chinese-made machines. The Omega 8004 is made in Korea. It's a solid machine. And here's the thing. Most people selling their juicers on different websites may have used it once or twice, and then they're selling it because they found they just didn't use it. And I, I, don't want you guys, I don't want that to happen to you. I want you guys to use the juicers. So, you know, that'd be my solution is to get a used machine. Now, of course, if you buy a used machine, there is no warranty, so make sure you check it out really well. I've had good luck buying used machines personally. Myself, from sellers, make sure you test it first. Make sure there's no funny noises. Make sure all the pieces are not damaged or anything. And you should be pretty good to go. 
you know, that being said, if you're serious about your health, you know, I would encourage you guys to save up and get a good juicer the first time, you know. My grandfather told me the right tool for the right job, and the right tool in this case is the, you know, Mac tools, if you guys are mechanics, not the Harbor Freight garbage, <laughs> although I have some Harbor Freight tools that have worked quite well. So, you know, that's the thing, and one of these machines may work great for years, they may go out on you, I don't really know, but I'm definitely going to tell you that the Omega is a solid company as well as Trivest and Kubings, the brands that I represent and they're here to stay and they've taken care of all the customers with the warranty issues and I don't, I simply don't know about these other machines that you could buy on Amazon. I can't simply test every Chinese machine coming out because I swear there's like five new juicers coming out every month on Amazon that came from nowhere <laughs> and I don't even know if they'll even be around for any significant amount of time after that. And that's pretty much my summary, and I'm going to stick to it. If you're interested in buying the NC800 that I use today, the link is down below. Um, first link in the description, as well as the link to the NC900, which is identical to this guy, except it is um, chrome-plated plastic. And then we have the 900SS, which is, has a stainless steel motor body, which is actually quite heavy-duty. doesn't have the handle, but that's the uh, upgrade. But you'll get the same exact yields in the NC800 or 900, no matter which model it is. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode. Hopefully, if you guys enjoyed this episode, learned a little bit, even though it was a little bit long, you know, to explain everything and show you guys the true differences, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you appreciate my videos, please be sure to support me and my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com, not the big box store, not any other website where, you know, corporate giants get rich and want to rule the world. I'm just sitting here trying to juice produce and show you guys what happens and give you guys my honest opinions and my honest take on the different juicers and some of the things going on, be on behind the scenes that you may not otherwise be aware of because I have been in, the, in, in this industry for over 20 years and juicing pretty much straight most days for the last 25 years myself because I live on a juicing lifestyle and I know how important it is to me and I'd hope one day you would also see how important it can be for you and your business and your support allows me to continue to make my educational videos so that I can help other people and just tell them the truth about juicing and juicers. That you guys can get the right one for you. Maybe that's a Chinese one. Maybe that's a Korean one. I don't really know. But at least now you're more informed. And you know have some of the wool not pulled under your eyes. Like some of the manufacturers on, uh, you know, in China. And that are sellers of the juicers. You know, don't want you to know the whole story. Be sure to share with juicing forums. And out there, uh, other people out there that may be considering a juicer. So they can see some of the differences up close because I don't think anybody else is going to really tell you guys all these things that I have today. Um, also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new upcoming episodes. I'm coming out about three every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up, what new juicer, what new vacuum blender I'll be testing that will allow you to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables because they're the healthiest foods on the planet. Make sure to click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. Finally be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes our wealth of knowledge over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to comparing and contrasting all the different uh, you know juicers as well as vacuum blenders so that you guys could have a more rich diet full of fruits and vegetables in the most nutritious way possible. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.